He was the son of a bootlegger who became a Grammy award-winning gospel artist. Larnell Harris joins us and shares his story of faith and perseverance. Plus, intense stomach pains were ruling her life. But I say, no, Lord, you have a purpose with all this. Today, she's pain-free. Find out why she says her faith is stronger than ever. That and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio 5. At number five. Meghan and Harry, now the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Faith-filled moments from the royal wedding, like American Bishop Michael Bruce Curry preaching. Must discover the power of love. The redemptive power of love. So darling, darling, stand by me. Britain's Kingdom Choir singing. And 19-year-old cellist Sheku Kana Mason performing. It's always inspiring to, to perform in front of a diverse audience and um, an audience that reflects um, what we see on our streets, and so that's really exciting. At number four. I'm a Texas girl, and my home state has had so much heartbreak over this past year. And once again, y'all, we're grieving for more kids that have died for just an absolute no reason at all. Fighting back tears, Kelly Clarkson opens the 2018 Billboard Music Awards with a tribute to the children and teachers who died in the Santa Fe, Texas school shooting. And she calls for action. Obviously, we want to pray for all the victims. We want to pray for their families. And I'm so sick of moment of silence. Like, God, it's not working. So why don't we, why don't we not do a moment of silence? Why won't we do a moment of action? Why don't we do a moment of change? Why don't we change what's happening? Because it's horrible. At number three, it is graduation season. Please offer a warm Kent State welcome home to our commencement speaker, Dr. Michael Keaton. And Ohio's Kent State University campus welcomes actor Michael Keaton to greet and encourage the class of 2018. Always think of the other guy, as my mom used to say. Be thoughtful. Honor decency. But Keaton, who looked more like this when he attended Kent, delivered his most memorable two words when he returned to accept an award. If I leave you with anything, I'm going to leave you with these two words. And those two words are... I'm Batman. And with that, Studio 5 congratulates all who are members of the class of 2018. At number two. Ask me how I did it, I just did it from the heart. Crushing the competition, been doing it from the start. Rapper Ludacris and his wife and family are thanking God in the middle of their pain. I am definitely one of those people that don't regret anything that's ever happened in my life because I 100% believe that everything happens for a reason. His wife is sharing the family struggle following a heartbreaking miscarriage. You got to take the good with the bad. The failure is a part of success. Sometimes you get knocked down, you got to get back up. I feel like that's what molded me and made me the person that I am today. In this Instagram post, Eudoxy writes, it was very easy to complain and have self-pity, but I refuse to let the enemy win. How could I complain when God has already blessed me with the opportunity to already experience motherhood? Thank you, God, for your favor over my life. At number one, it's your first look at the new CBS series, God Friended Me. New York City, home to 8.6 million people. Everyone searching for meaning and answers. There is no proof of God anywhere in the universe. We will debate that and more on today's episode of The Millennial Prophet. I am your host, Mouse Finder, reminding you that there is no God and that is okay. Per usual, you're misinformed. You grew up in the church, you know this better than anyone. Yes, it is true. My father's a reverend. We got the whole Luke Vader dynamic going on. I thought I had it all figured out. But then something happened and it changed my life forever. I got a friend request from God. <laughs> what? The show from Alcatraz Creators is called a funny, uplifting series exploring questions of faith, existence, and science. I think you just saved my life. Thank you. Nice. Try. 
And this outspoken atheist finds his world turned inside out from that fateful friend request from God. You either believe or you don't. Or you recognize that there's something greater at work here. I don't know, some grand design connecting us all. There is no grand design. You know, it's kind of like the prodigal son, except God is using Facebook to bring you and dad back together. You see what growing up in a house of religion does to the mind? All right, we got a new faith program. Mm -hmm. God friended me. Yes. Uh, do you like it? I am. There is a, a six minute preview uh, at CBS, and it is the one series that I am most excited about seeing. Uh, it seems to do a really good job of exploring questions of faith. Uh, and it, even the storyline behind why this gentleman has become an atheist is if we ask enough people, you realize you have these people in your lives who a series of bad things has happened that has shaken your faith. And then there's a father who's a minister who's telling him, you know what, my faith was shaken by the same tragedies your life was shaken by, and I'm still holding on to God. Uh, to see that play out, uh, it's it's very well done. It's it's not heavy. It's, it's light from what I can tell. Uh, there's a lot of humor in it, but it ask some serious questions. Uh, and it's really an enjoyable piece thus far. My prayer is this is as good as the preview. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're A-list a producers. I mean, Absolutely. it doesn't get any. No, you got that right. They've got the street cred and the network cred. Yes. And the, the good thing about this that sort of hints that it's really good is that there was a fight between the networks to get this series. Oh. So when they are fighting to get it, they obviously see that there's great potential here uh, and there should be more uh, Any like this in the here? Is this another touch by an angel? I is think this, it is. Uh, I think it is. This is a defining moment I for the culture kind of thing? I really believe it is, hope it is. I am certainly pursuing these cre creators to, to talk more and to see more uh, and to hopefully bring uh, you more on this and I want to know why they're doing it. Absolutely. Because it's not like the other series no. they've done. Uh, no, because Alcatraz, no, not, not at all. <laughs> not, not at all. But they are, are, are uh, great creators, so it's, it's one to look forward to in the fall. And I'm going to be looking even before the fall. <laughs> all right, let's go to the royal wedding. Here we got Michael Curry upstaging the bride <laughs> at her own wedding. How, how did he do that? You know, the invitation came from, um, from, from Harry and Meghan. They wanted him to do it so much so that when he got the call, he thought, they yeah. were joking. Like, are you, me? <laughs> are you serious? So when his staff started doing some digging, like, no, this is legit. They really want you to come and do this. Why did they pick him? Uh, he is not sure. Um, no clue. And he's had no opportunity to, to ask why. Uh, of course, oh. he's the head of the Episcopal Church. He did a brief meeting with them at the reception. But that's it. But he took full advantage of the platform. My wife and I were up watching um, Saturday morning, along with millions of other people, uh, and we the whole world. Was yeah, <laughs> as it was he's quite, there, it was quite the stage. You could say, oh, "Oh, this is this is this is memorable. This is not going to be forgotten. This sermon is not going to be forgotten." He capitalized on that moment and allowed God to use him. Uh, and you can even see on the faces as they were taking shots in the audience. Some people were wondering, "What? What? Yeah. What? What is this? I'm not used to this. I kind of like it, but..." I'm not sure exactly what it is. And he said he had to, of course, submit his sermon to the queen before he could actually deliver it. And there were no changes. It was fine. But the style of the delivery is probably what they didn't expect as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, the words, the words look yeah. like this. Uh, like, but but as you he get some style points. <laughs> yeah, he was, he's amazing. Amazing guy. Okay, ludicrous. Mm -hmm. He's gone through some tr trouble. Yeah, He's yes. really had some tragedy in his life. He, uh, he and his wife uh, have one daughter together. He has a f uh, three other daughters from uh, previous relationships, but they have one daughter together who's only a few years old, uh, and they were looking forward to having their second child together. And his wife uh, suffered a miscarriage, had to have surgery following it, and Eudoxy shared, and you know, it would be really easy for me to complain, and I was getting ready to head down that path of complaining. Mm. But then I realized, no, I, I can't. I can't because God has been too good to me um, to do that. And if I were even just to compare myself to other people, there are many women who can't even say they're mothers. I am a mother. I've given birth to one child. And yes, I want another. Uh, but I'm not going to let this tragedy 
knock me or my family down. And she chose to share that story uh, with magazines and Instagram posts um, so that others can see, you know, that even in the face of, of tragedy, a strong woman of faith trusting God, she continues to thank God for the favor over her life, her direct words. Uh, and it's it's beautiful story to see. Uh, my wife and I have endured miscarriages, so I certainly relate and identify. Mm. Going through that is tough. And I always tell my, my male friends when they go through it, I say, you know what, I, that is probably the most helpless I have ever felt in my marriage because I'm suffering. I don't know how to console her. And then to go through it more than one time, it's really hard. And then to thank God in that moment, that's even harder. Uh, and we struggle to do that. And I'm grateful to God that we found the way to do that. Oh. And I'm glad she's sharing it. I always tell people, don't thank him for the tragedy. Thank him for seeing through it. Absolutely. Uh, he's got an answer and he's got a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up knowing my mother had miscarried right before me. And I wouldn't be here today if that pregnancy had gone to term. Absolutely. So there, there, there is a plan. Yeah, there there's is a picture another. on my desk with my daughter and it says miracle. And she came after those two miscarriages. And to this day, I'm like, wow, I'm glad it's you who are here yeah. because she's a little spit. The other part of it is I got a brother I get to meet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I got, a, I got another brother. Yes, indeed. All right, Kelly Clarkson, speaking uh, of senseless tragedy mm -hmm. that you can't, you, you keep asking why. And I don't think there are any real easy answers. But here she is saying we need action. But I'm, I'm scratching my head. What's the action? Yeah, and I think I think she she is as as well. But simply saying, to, I think her her frustration is I don't want to respond to this one, the same way that we do others. Uh, even if uh, I can't necessarily identify immediately what the action is, let us not just move on. Let's let let's deal with it. Let's let's do something. Uh, and I think with every single tragedy, uh, naturally, there should be moments of silence. Naturally, there should be prayer. But we need to ask ourselves, um, what do we do? And I will say this. There is a mother um, of a child. I forgot which tragedy it was, but uh, she was being interviewed by a journalist and the journalist called the, the shooter a monster. And the mother stopped that journalist and said, don't do that. Don't do that. He is not a monster. He is a human being who missed something in life. There's something missing. We need to pray for him. We need to love on him. And we need to figure out a way to make sure that other children don't suffer that same loss. And I was so impressed with her to stop the journalist in the middle of it and say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let you do that. Uh, and I think those kind of steps individually, we should all be thinking, OK, you, you got to pray for the, the victims, but you also got to pray for the person who victimized because something is wrong there as well. And we got to treat the whole thing. And that's biblical. Mm -hmm. And Solomon said, I looked at the afflicted and there was no one to comfort yes. them. And then I looked at the persecutor. Mm -hmm. There's no one to comfort him. And Absolutely. Um, you 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 do. I do wonder, though, what's the action? And I actually I am do. worried that are we getting numb to it? That's and when fear, you yeah. start ranking uh, tragedies based on the number of deaths, um, what have we come to as a culture? Why, why are schools not safe? Mm -hmm. um, anyway. Excellent question. We can, we can debate this and discuss this for Forever. a while. But mm -hmm. they're giving me the wrap. <laughs> okay. Well, for all the latest in news, check out Ephraim's weekly show. It's called Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. Up next, he helped define a generation of contemporary Christian music. Find out how Larnell Harris overcame adversity through faith right after this. Well, Grammy-winning gospel artist Larnell Harris has seen five decades of success. And his journey to the top is marked by adversity and then his own perseverance. Take a look. Hall of Fame vocalist and five-time Grammy Award winner Larnell Harris has helped to define a generation of contemporary Christian music. With 19 number one songs and countless top ten hits, his music career has spanned five decades and is still going strong. His story started in the hills of Kentucky as the son of a bootlegger. Larnell watched his father taken off to jail, battled racial tensions, and even lost his voice, but chose to keep singing for God. Larnell made his way to music's most acclaimed stages and venues. In his memoir, Shaped Notes, Larnell shares his most painful and triumphant memories from his childhood and career, 
that helped to shape him into the man he is today. Well, Arnell is with us. It's great to have you here. It is so good to be with you, uh, man. Uh, and your you. voice, you're, you're a legend. Well, you know what? I, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you don't know about that? I don't know about that. I'm having a lot of fun and uh, uh, just still excited about what God is doing. Yeah. I, I discovered a lot of, walking through your book, Shape Notes, uh, just the, the number of people that had impact on you in your life and just sort of defining moments for you to say. I'm telling you, it, you know, uh, growing up in a little town, Danville, Kentucky, you had a lot of grand, grandpas and grandmas because every was a close knit community, mm -hmm. everybody knew everybody. You did something at uh, Miss Mag's house. They, your parents yeah. knew it before you got home. <laughs> they also said, uh, were saying in many different ways, listen, if you will sit still and let us um, share with you the life lessons that we have gleaned because we've been out there, God can, God can use you. He will do something in your life. Now, a lot of people don't know. I didn't know that your father was a bootlegger. That's right. And that... That, well, that was a revelation. It was, it that was, must have been tough for you. Well, it was, you know, I'm a kid, you know. It was tough for our family uh, because there was a dynamic that, that was there mm -hmm. during that time in our lives. But my mom, being an old Pentecostal holiness prayer warrior, uh, sort of prayed us through that. In fact, she, she actually prayed my dad into the kingdom. I, I listened to that. I watched that. As a little boy, I would mm -hmm. sit and listen to her pray for dad. And, uh, and his friends were praying for him. And it was as though he had been put on a, you know, in the, in the scriptures they talk about that cot that they put the paralytic on and took him up yeah. to the roof and, and, and just vision every prayer, taking away a shingle until he was, until they were able to lure him down where he was face to face with Jesus. And Jesus, um, uh, forgave him and saved him and healed him. And boy, he became the spiritual head of our home. And uh, just a whole, the whole uh, dynamic of our home was different. I, I, I felt it. I didn't understand it all. Mm -hmm. But as I've grown older, I know exactly what was happening. God was what breaking was the cycle. time frame? He went to jail when you were seven and then... Seven or eight years old, yeah. Uh -huh. and he, he spent a year. He spent a year there and... Um, uh, you know, it was one of those things that was probably the best thing that ever happened. And he came out of there with, uh, uh, with a trade, something he knew how to do. Uh, he was a baker. And instead of filling liquor bottles, he was putting donuts up on the, and making pies. You know what I mean? Using and, yeast for a different purpose. Yes, totally. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. And, and, uh, and, and most of all, just, pr just a pride in what God was doing in his life. He had... Uh, years to grow. I mean, he had to grow into this, but uh -huh. he always went to church. They always went to church. So uh, there was just a different dynamic. This little boy needed to see that. And mm -hmm. I believe that if there are any heroes in this book, it's my mom and dad. Dad, who finished the eighth grade. Mom, who finished maybe the third grade. And, uh, but they hadn't, God gave them enough wisdom to break a cycle. Listen, my grandfather went to prison, okay? Oh. My, uh, my, my dad went, my, my uncle uh, went to prison, but my little cousin, Melvin, and, 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 and I, we didn't go. Mm. And it was because God broke cycles. He broke that cycle. And um, I am so thankful. They're, they're, they're my heroes, continue to be. Who, who first identified that you had a voice? There was a lady named Miss Georgia Dunhigh. She, was, she, she played piano for our church choir, but she taught piano lessons to the kids in town. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether they wanted them or not. I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't. That's piano lessons. That's, that's yeah. it. And, uh, but she found out I could sing and could carry too. And I wouldn't sing, but as a, as a little boy, so I sang at home. I'd sit at the piano. We had no piano. And I'd put on dark glasses because I love Ray Charles. And I'd yeah. sit back and forth and rock and all that kind of stuff and cry and didn't know what was going on. But uh, she found out I could sing. And uh, I did my first concert at nine years old with Miss Georgie Dunahigh playing the piano. And she was protective. She, she told my mother, she said, don't let Larno play any, any sports in the dust or anything that were hurt, or hurt his voice. I mean, she really, she really got on my last nerve. Yeah. She was, was and I bet you didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. But I tell you what I, what I tell you now, I look back on that 
And I hope that every town has a Miss Georgie, someone who doesn't want anything. They're not, they're not uh, angling for anything. They just see someone and pour themselves into their lives. And that, that you know, I, I will ever be indebted to Build to up Georgie. people, build yes. for the next generation That's it. That's it. And, and leave a legacy. That's it. Yeah. And uh, she's going to have a reward. You, you made it. And then you lost your voice. Yeah, I had uh, I made it a little too good. And I was singing all the time and uh, developed nodules on my vocal cords. Um, and normally, uh, it's, it's like in a marriage that you have a little argument. It's really not about that. It's about something else. Mm -hmm. And as I, um, as, I, as I suffered through that, uh, the first thing, I couldn't sing, and so I was going to doctors, and they were trying to diagnose, diagnose the problem, and spe uh, speech pathologist, and all these people, and I had, did have nodules. But it wasn't really about that. It was about, it was, it was about trust. And as I went through a year of writing notes, God was continually showing me that, you know, this is about trust in me. You've been trusting in voice and trusting in where you could go and what you're going to do. And I'm, I, we're going to change that narrative just a little bit because I've got some special things I want you to do. And it is a lesson that I have never, ever forgotten. This is not about me or you or, or, or anybody else. It's about God. Everything we do is about Him. And He, released, and he releases us with, with that Holy Spirit power to go and and do the very best thing that we have, the best we can, when he helps us get that narrative straight of trusting in him. Amen. The book, it's called Shape Notes, and it's available wherever books are sold. And his new CD is also out, Disturb Us, Lord, and you can pick up that as well. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you, buddy. Well, coming up, the pain was more than she could bear. Honestly, it would be time that you wanted to get up. We are human, but I say, no, Lord, you have a purpose with all this. Find out what that purpose was and how she was healed. That's next. For two years, the woman in our next story couldn't eat and couldn't sleep. She wasted away to just 73 pounds. She saw countless doctors and specialists, but never found relief until she went through what she called the worst day of her life. The soon I wake up in the morning, that was immediately, that pain was getting me right here in the top of my stomach. It was like a fire and that makes me bombing in and bombing in. Then I was all day with that pain. No relief, I couldn't sleep good. Headaches, it was making me feel all my body, not function for nothing. The doctor gave me some medication. It helped me a little bit, but then I was starting feeling that pain again. It was like 24-7, my pain. They put the camera inside my stomach. They do all tests that a human being could have in their body, on their stomach and everything, but they never find nothing, only a little bit acid reflex. For two years, I was suffering of all that, no eating, no nothing, only drinking liquids. It was the grace of God that keep me every day. So I had to go to the hospital, to the emergency room almost twice of every week. They just put me a little bit IV, calm me a little bit of pain and send me home because they didn't know what else to do either with me. I lost more than 30 something pounds, but I went almost to 73 pounds. Honestly, it would be time that you wanted to get up. We are human. But I say, no, Lord, you have a purpose with all this. That day I wake up so like the worst day of my life. Then we put the 700 club like always. We see Golden, and then he decides to give a word of knowledge. There's someone you've had recurring problems with acid reflux and you've damaged your esophagus and there's like a permanent burning, uh, permanent heartburn, and, and you don't know what to do. God's healed it right now in Jesus' name. And I put my hand up, 
and I believe it, like I told you, it was instant, instant. I feel that Holy Spirit, it was, it was something so beautiful. And after that, no pain, no nothing, nothing. I stand praising God and giving God all the glory, all the glory to Him for the thing that He has done. After two years and something, I had some pancakes and I was, I was eating. <laughs> Everything have a purpose, why right? I went through with all this, for I could be a blessing for somebody else. And yes, my faith is being more strong than ever. Yes, thank God. And your faith can be even stronger too. All we have to do is believe in the finished work of the cross. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he meant it, and it's finished. He has broken the, the laws of sin and death. He has broken that. And by his stripes, we are healed. Now, what does it take to get that? Well, it just takes looking to the cross, looking to that wonderful fact, and then Take it forward. Look three days later, him risen from the grave. Look at him now, seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is he doing? He's praying for you. So if he's doing all of that, all we have to do is say, yes, Lord, I receive it now in your name. Let's pray for you now. Lord God, we just lift those who have disease in their body now who are suffering with pain, with infirmity, and we declare over them now that you have taken away all our pain, all our infirmity, and if you have taken it away, we don't have to take it any longer. So we receive it now. We receive the finished work of the cross, and we declare that you forgive all our iniquity and you heal all our diseases. We receive it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalms 91. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. God bless you. We'll see you again.